not quite one-fourth and never just half, but the entirety of one primate, whole. It is the part of a story, an idea that means more to you than me. Hello and welcome to Full Gorilla Life. We are Jeremy Keene, Larry Medina, and Corey Hewlings. Each week, we will break down an important life concept or talk with an inspiring person so that you can live your full gorilla life. What's up? We're back. We're here with Nicole from Nicole Marie Boudoir. She's been a longtime friend, and we're going to speak to her about her inspirational story. I feel like she's an inspiring person and how her businesses came to be and what she left behind and kind of the decisions the decisions that she's made. So without further ado, we're going to get into it. Nicole, if you want to introduce, introduce yourself. I feel like, I feel like Corey's been drinking. <laughs> I, yeah. And maybe, maybe it, it, it's too yeah. much shaking Something. in the salsa. Yeah. 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 What's going on? All right. All right. Hi, I'm Nicole. Um, I am a boudoir photographer for those of you that don't know what it is. Um, how do I go about even saying it? Um, Boudoir sometimes I think is misconstrued or the idea. Do you guys know what boudoir? I would say if I was to to try to describe it, I would say it's um, elegant, beautiful photography to bring individuals, personalities out in a place that they're probably not always comfortable, but at the end become confident. Did I nail that? That's pretty pretty good. good? That's pretty good. That's good. Yeah. Have you looked at boudoir photography before? Have you seen? Only yours. Only mine. So you've seen my work. Yes. What would you, how would you describe it? Um, I would describe it as really giving the women, uh, well, ladies an outlet to be sexy and, and feel sexy. That's the way I look at it. I look at it as classy and just empowering the uh, females really into into being who, who they may want to be. So, um, a lot of people that don't know what boudoir is, um, there's a misconception in the, I feel like just in society that boudoir is overly sexual or it almost goes into like pornographic sometimes. And depending on the photographer, um, it can be erotic and maybe a little bit over the edge, but the work that I do is more geared towards building women's confidence, like you guys said. Um, and I think one of the biggest things that I try to tell my clients is that doing boudoir photography should be about yourself. It should be about loving who you are as a woman and not just about doing it to get acceptance from any outside party, male, female, your friends. It should be all about loving yourself. So that's why we kind of do what we do. Some of it is um, erotic or, you know, sexual, but the main purpose of what we do is to really bring out confidence in women. Cool. So the thing about your story that I find most inspiring though, is what you left behind. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So why don't you tell our listeners like what you, how you got into boudoir photography, kind of the, yeah. yeah, Like, like how long have you been doing it? So I, um, I've only been shooting full time for three years. Um, I was a nurse. I went to nursing school and was a registered nurse for eight years, actually, before I got into this. Um, And it's actually a pretty common question. People ask me all the time how I got into this, why I want to do it, what does it do for me? And I think really what happened was my husband and I had our second child and... I had a camera, a digital camera. I wanted to learn how to use it. I started practicing on kids and families. I actually shot a wedding the first year that I had my camera. And um, people that have cameras, they want to say, I'm a photographer. Like, I have a camera, I'm a photographer, but it really doesn't work that way. (laughs) Um, So I started practicing, did a wedding, did some family photos, and I wasn't getting any kind of fulfillment out of what I was doing like I just wasn't getting reactions or responses from people like I wanted to. Um, so I was in this Facebook group asking for some critique on my other work and I saw a photo of this woman and she was like beautiful. And that was the first time I saw boudoir and I was like, that looks really fun. Um, a lot more fun than shooting a wedding or I I don't know, maybe to some people that that would be fun. But so when you say, um, you, you weren't getting the, 
responses what, what do you mean like i would show people their photos and and they would be like oh yeah this is so nice and oh these are so pretty and oh there's my baby but like personally i wasn't getting I don't know. I don't even know what I was looking for. I just, when I would be done working, okay. I wouldn't feel fulfilled. It was like, gotcha. I don't okay. know. I don't and know that's pretty what important, that was. Right? Yeah. 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 Like it was just, I was, it was lacking something and I didn't know what it, what it was. But, um, but you knew at that point that you still wanted to do photography. Oh yeah. I still had an interest in it. I just knew something was missing and I didn't know what that aspect a, was. Huh. Like something was missing from it, but I didn't know what. So I saw these like kind of sexual photos and I was like, that looks really fun. Um, and the first time I shot, um, a session, it was with two women, one, you know, two back to back sessions. We did two people in one day. And the first girl was a mom of two at the time. She was very, she lacked confidence, like huge. So okay. she walked in the room, she, she walked into the house that we were shooting at and she was nervous and shaking. And she was like, Oh, I was up late with my kids and I need coffee. And you know, we glammed her up hair and makeup. And when we started shooting, she just changed right in front of me. I saw her change. I saw this person come out of her that was completely different than the person that walked in the door. And that's when I was like, Oh my God, this is, I want to do this. Like, this is what I, I want to make people, I want to make people feel like this. If I can make a woman feel like this just by taking her photos, I could do this. I, I want to do this all the time. Um, and it just, it kind of took off from there. That's At that awesome. point, were you still nursing? Oh yeah. I was still working full time. I, well, no, I was per diem, but I was still working, um, eight days a month, I think at the time. So for and the folks who don't kids. know, what, what's per diem mean? Per diem is just, um, it's not full-time hours. So it was eight, 12 hour shifts a month still. Okay. And I had two kids and a husband. Um, and I started pursuing boudoir on the weekends at home. Um, I shot out of my own house. So we would, he would pack the kids up. We would literally clean the whole house. We would change the bed sheets. We were like tucking toys behind the doors and stuff <laughs> to try to make it look like, you know, it was as clean and tidy as possible. My clients would come, we would shoot in my house. I had a hair and makeup team that went on for about six months, I think, right? About six months. Um, and then work was getting more and more stressful and it was getting harder to balance all of it. Wait, when you say work, you mean nursing? Yeah. By nursing the way, was very nursing stressful. is not like a job that is easy to give up. Right. I mean, to, the to, security to, is to the hard layman, to let go. Right. Yeah. To the layman person. Cause that's a, a decent paying job, yes. right? Very yeah, good financially. Job. Um, the stability of knowing that you're always going to have a job. I right. mean, nurses are in high demand everywhere. Everywhere. And I was in trauma ICU at the time, so it was very stressful. I was working almost an hour away from home on top of a 12-hour shift, so it was 14 hours with the drive time. Um, so, you know, it was just, it, that was very stressful on top of having two kids, on top of trying to learn photography, because I really had no background in it at all. Oh. So, so how long did you go then with both before you decided to make the leap? Six months. Like so you six months six and then you months just yeah. where I was rolling along. I had a good bankroll. I got some better gear. I bought some better gear so that I could start shooting a little bit better. I started learning the skill more and the stress of my job was getting to be so much that my husband finally just said, you know, we talked about it a few times and he said, just quit, just quit your job. And let's just, let's just try and see what happens for six months. Give yourself six months. If it doesn't work, you can always go back to nursing. Like that yeah. was one thing that we knew. Awesome. That was the good thing about the the stability of nursing was we knew if it didn't work out, there was always going to be that to fall back on. Which that's huge, right? Because yeah. uh, you have the backing mm -hmm. of your spouse. Right? Oh, absolutely. And so <laughs> in, in that case, it, it's huge to hear that. And just having that backing is really gives you the confidence, right? Or, yeah. Or, and people ask me all the time, like, what did your husband say when you quit your job? I'm like, shit, he was the one that pushed me to quit. <laughs> he was the one that was like, you need to just quit and do this full time. And I remember the first time we kind of talked about money and like what I was going to charge and, you know, um, and it kind of like where I was lining myself up just to start. And he was definitely 
skeptical. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we, there was a lot of skeptical, you know, feelings and, and opinions and, um, but in what I was learning in the community online and with other photographers was that I knew where I wanted to put myself to start. I didn't want to start at the bottom. I wanted to start where I could succeed right off the bat. So it was very hard to swallow, um, that I was going to jump into a business kind of like on, what is the level I'm trying to say on a, um, like a higher level, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Exclusive, maybe like a higher, okay, okay. I, I was, I was jumping in as like a newbie, a but tier, I knew, like a higher tier yes, of quality yes. work, but as a new entrepreneur, a new business owner, I was bringing myself up to here. So that was kind of hard to swallow, but I leapt into it and it took off. That's awesome. Yeah. Was there, <laughs> was there a, like a pivotal moment for you? that changed or made that decision easier or was it just like a prolonged thing you had been doing the nursing and the photography and you were like all right I'm done with it or was there anything that was pivotal that you were like all right I'm I'm making the jump I'm done with this um I think once I knew that I was having a good response from what I was doing I knew like every time that I would ask people to get in front of my lens and work with me I had people that wanted to do it so I think that kind of gave me the confidence too. like, I knew there was a demand and I knew there was no one local that was doing anything that I was doing, which kind of made it scary too, because there was nobody else doing it. So why would I succeed? That yeah, was, was kind there of not scary. a market for it. Is that why they weren't right. doing it? Or was mm -hmm. it an untapped market? Right. And that was, that was scary too, because a lot, they had a lot of people that were like, oh my gosh, it, it, this is such a small town. It's a retirement community. It's Florida. Like, you well, know. you're always going to have the naysayers yeah. and I'm sure you had always. plenty of those. Yeah. My family, we didn't even tell my family. I didn't tell my family that I quit nursing for three months after I quit because I didn't want anybody influencing, your, influencing my decision and, and get your head sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Making, I didn't you want second that. guess that you don't mm -hmm. need that. Yeah. yeah right. There's plenty of people that told me not to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's, um, I think your family and your friends look out for your best interest and they, they're thinking what could happen. They're not seeing the potential. Yeah. They want what's best for you, right, but they don't, course. they don't necessarily want you to take that leap. Right. Or they're take afraid. a leap. Fear yeah. Fear stops yeah. people. Yeah. Fear yeah. is or, the biggest thing that stops people from making big decisions in their life. So yeah. when you have the fear in your family and your friends around you and they're giving, put, putting that fear on you, it's going to stop you from moving well, forward. Well, it, it's a couple of things too, right? At least the way I look at it is that you have people who are comfortable, right? And if they're comfortable with you the way that you are as well, if you're changing, that can also rub them the wrong way. True. Yeah. So essentially that they can like lead to, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Most people yeah. don't like change though. So. The, oh, yes. th that's exactly it. Right. right. So if you change and we're always hanging out, I might yeah. be like, Jeremy, yeah, don't do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, let's go back to eating potato chips. Yeah. All right. We talk to each other about that a lot, I think. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, all right. So you've been doing this for three years. Yes. Um, as far as your success, right? You, you've been doing pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I see your Instagram. It looks very professional, very nicely done. Is there any story in there that that you can think of from from your Instagram, right? From or from? Not, we don't have to name names, but is there any story like the first one that you mentioned, where you said you saw her being empowered, and you could tell that she felt good kind of like Beyonce, right? She says when she's on stage, she's Sasha Fierce, right? Something along those lines. Um, why do you know that statement? Like <laughs> why do I know that statement? Yeah. You don't know Saucy Fierce? No. I don't either. either. That's okay. I'm just I kidding. Don't I don't either. But. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate how you tried. But but I was going to yeah. I was, I was try to help Larry yeah. out, but um, I'm okay. I'm, I'm totally confident. Okay. I'm, I'm good with it. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. So I, I, can you think of a story, right? Kind of mm. like along those lines where you saw the empowerment Every and, day, okay. every client. I mean, that is my goal. Every single client. So, I mean, I guess the story, it, the story is my, my goal is when a woman looks at my camera and gives me that smile or gives me that, Oh my God, I can't believe that's me or cries, which the crying doesn't happen as often. It's more like they look at the camera and they're like, that's not me. And I, I'm like, I just took it. Like, it's you with no editing. I didn't do anything to you like this. I literally just took this photo of you and they don't, they, they're like, I can't believe that's me. Like that is my goal for every single client is to look at herself and say, 
wow, I can't believe I look like that. What am I judging myself for? Why do I, why do I beat myself up when that's me right there? Like she literally just took that of me and it, it makes people change. I don't know how, but it changes their brain. It changes the way they think. I had it happen to me actually. Um, my associate and I were shooting each other and you know, I have insecurities and, and she took a picture of me and I looked at the camera and I was like, the same thing. Like it, I was just like, I can't believe you just took that. Like where is X, Y, or Z fill in the blank. I mean, where are the mom boobs, the saggy, you know, belly skin, cellulite, anything that a woman feels insecure about. Um, you could really interject anything into that because that's what happens when I show my clients the camera and they just can't believe that it's them. Well, I think that's what people do in general. They just beat themselves up. Absolutely. They just yeah. beat themselves into the ground. Yeah. You know, when you look at that camera, it gives you something physical to look at and you can look at it and now you see what Mark sees. Right. I see know? the whole picture. My eyes yeah. don't go right to the imperfection. I tell my clients that too when I consult with them. When you look in the mirror, we all know that one thing that we have that we hate. Oh my God, I have this roll right here when I lean this specific way. So you look in the camera and you lean that way and you're like, yeah, that fucking roll is still there. You know, it doesn't go away. This cellulite, it might not go away, you know, whatever. Um, but when I look at you in the camera, that's not what I'm focusing on. So then I don't think it, it, it's almost like it's not portrayed in the photo, and it, you know, it probably shows them that that's probably what most people aren't focusing exactly. on. Exactly. So it's a nice, that's it kind of gives the lens of everybody else probably in the world that looks at you yes. where you, like you said in the mirror are pinpointing the one thing the that one you thing. always think about mm-hmm. and just over and over where it grinds in your brain where now you see it. Oh, that's what everybody sees. Every time you look in the mirror, your eyes go right to that, that crooked tooth or the bump on your nose or whatever it is. And, um, you know, this try, I try to show women that through my camera and the eyes of your fiance or your husband or your boyfriend or anyone else that's looking at you, they're not looking at those imperfections. And that imperfections make them who they are. So there's more to it than just that one thing. Right. I think yeah. that's empowering in that itself. Too. And yeah. some people want, um, like people that have scars or, you know, have had a C-section, they want, they, they don't mind showing that because it's mm-hmm. a part of them. And I don't, I don't edit those things out. I don't edit things that are permanent on someone's skin because I feel like it is a part of who they are and they shouldn't want to remove that. You know, if they have a C-section. That's part of their scar. story. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you part had babies and yeah. you had a, a C-section, don't take that off of your photos yeah. because then it's not you anymore. Absolutely. I did have one question for you that I wrote down. Probably a lot more than that. Do you think you can be successful in business without a good support system? I think you can do anything. (laughs) I think you can do anything, but support definitely helps. I I actually just last night we were just talking and I, we like high fived each other about something. And I said, this is because of, he said, good job. And I said, it's, it's only a good job because of you. Was it house related? It was. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, we high each other. And just, he- <laughs> just for reference, Nikki's husband is my best friend, Mark. <laughs> so as I mentioned, Mark earlier, and they are uh, bought a piece of property and are looking to build a house. So I know that's a big step in their future. Yeah. That's what she's referencing. Yeah. So we, we high-fived each other and he was like, good job, mama. You know, and I said, the only reason it's, I did a good job is because of you. And I mean, yeah, for me, without the support of him and having three kids I would never be able to do this. Yeah. And that's kind of how I look at that question is like, because we all want to say that, you know, we can grind, we can get through it without anybody. I can do this myself. Mm-hmm. But if I'm honest with myself, I feel like, yeah, I might be successful, but I probably would never be as ex- successful as as I could be without a good support system. It definitely makes like, it I easier. Think, <laughs> I think there's a next level that you can get to it def- with, yeah. with yeah. that support system. Yeah. I agree with you. I think you get you can get so far on your own with hard work, but you need that support to kind of sometimes get over yeah. the hump yeah, to where you can get to that level. It's just like a leg up. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, if you got somebody in your corner like Mark, I mean, you got a leg up on somebody that doesn't have somebody in there, a single Absolutely. mom that's got three kids at home trying to make it happen. Right. Not to say she can't make it happen, but you definitely have a leg up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And um, I think, too, that it's important to, um, you know, I don't want to ever discourage someone that is in that kind of position. You, ha- you might have to figure out where to find the support. 
Yeah, you you might have to look to your church community or more inside your immediate family versus a significant, a significant other. But, um, you know, once you find the support and you do have it, it definitely makes it easier. Yeah. Because if you don't have that around you, go find it. Mm -hmm. Because if what you have around you is nothing but negative, that's in a bad, you're in a bad bad spot. You know, you shouldn't have people beating you down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard enough. You're hard on yourself, beating yourself down. You shouldn't have people around you beating you down. Yeah, Yeah, I agree. It's easy to doubt yourself. And then if somebody else is throwing that in, it's awful. Yeah. So I have a question that came up when I brought up who we were interviewing from someone I work with. And she said that she's kind of, she's heard from you and whatnot. But I guess when you first started, they would come, this is her question. So I told her I'd ask it. (laughs) <laughs> um, they come already with their makeup and stuff, but now you have, I heard you even mention it. You have a team, so you have other people. So yeah. you kind of built mm-hmm. your brand a little bigger with other people. Could you explain how you got to that level where you needed them to be part of it, part of the package, if you will? So that came with wanting to be on like a better exclusive level okay. of photography. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted the, I wanted to build an experience. I wanted it to be, I wanted to emphasize that it was about more than just the photos. It's not the photos. It's about the experience, about how you make the woman feel. And every woman loves to get their makeup and hair done. Like if you guys are married, I don't know what your situations yes, are, but they, you know, yes. when your wife or your girlfriend or whoever goes and has her hair done, like she comes home, like, you know, flaunting her stuff. Like it feels good. Um, pair in some professional makeup with that too. And they just feel really good about themselves. So that was uh, something that I wanted to offer because it was a leg up on my competition. I, I do believe in community over competition. I am willing to talk to anybody about the profession, but I also wanted to offer something that other people weren't doing. And mm-hmm. so that's why I wanted a studio. And that's also why I wanted to have a team because I wanted them to be able to show up and literally roll out of bed with like a bag of stuff. And we just take over. I cool. kind of wanted to like do everything for them. So, so, so being a business owner, um, what is one of the things that people don't really think about? Right. Um, as far <laughs> as, right. Uh, like, like right off the bat, I can okay. think of something. Um, okay. they don't, they don't understand all of the behind the scenes. Um, I'm, I'm not inexpensive and a lot of people don't understand that, I can use a really simple number. So let's say you hire a photographer to shoot your wedding and they're charging you a thousand dollars. Okay. Basic number. Um, if they're an established business owner and they have five employees and a studio space and, um, professional level equipment and utilities insurance, um, out of that thousand dollars that, that you're paying that person, they're probably taking home 200. So when people look at me and, and they kind of snub their nose, like, oh my God, you know, she's, she's cheating people because she's charging so much. If you knew all of the expenses on the back end of it, you would realize that I'm charging what I need to make a living. I'm not trying to cheat people or, you know, I'm, I literally substituted my full-time job for this. So I have to make Mm -hmm. the amount of money that's going to support my family. Um, and I'm creating a life that I want and that's nobody's business, but my own of, of, you know, the price tag. So I think that's something that women want me to give discounts or want me to shoot them for less or don't want to pay me for X amount or whatever. And, and they're not thinking about all the other things that come with running a business and that I'm not taking all that money and putting it in my pocket. It's a fraction. So that's a big part of it. Now, have you ever had a photo shoot where the person didn't bring anything like, um, we I actually, okay. So probably one of the most awkward situations was, <laughs> I know this story. <laughs> actually, when he asked about a story earlier, I was like, you thought it was going to come uh, up. Yeah. That was the one you thought of. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Are you sure? Are you sure? I'm, this is I'm pretty sure. Yes. Um, so the most awkward situation was probably <laughs> two years ago and this girl came to her photo shoot and we were like, okay, we're going to, we're going to do this Facebook live. Like we're going to do it live. Okay. Um, and I want, I want like my, fa- I have a Facebook group. It, it was women. on your Facebook live? On my Facebook live. Okay. No, my women's empowerment group. There's only women in it. Okay. But there's 10,000 women in there. Okay. Oh, nice. And it wasn't at the time, but there, it, there was still a lot, maybe 5,000 and we were going to do this Facebook live. So she, I'm like, I'm looking through her laundry, you know, and she, um, she is getting, she's in hair and makeup. And I, I start realizing that there's no panties like at all. <laughs> <laughs> is this what you were thinking of her now? So I'm like, um, the, 
do you, did you bring any panties with you? And she was like, oh, I don't really wear panties. And I was like, okay, well, what about the ones you have on? Like, what do they look like? And she was like, I don't have any on. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh and God. we're live. Okay. That's awesome. That's and awesome. we still did the Facebook live, but I just posed her and directed her and had her in an outfit that, um, she, she actually had a shirt on at one point that was just long. So you couldn't even tell she didn't have any panties on. <laughs> that <laughs> but is that, awesome. that, yeah. yeah. I, otherwise, um, we have, we prep everybody. They get tons of information. Um, and one of the things that they get is a wardrobe guide and a lingerie guide. And in there, it tells them what I want them to bring. And I tell them at least three outfits. Um, but the outfits is a loose term outfit can be a bra and panty set, um, a white tank top and a rope. That could be your three rope? outfits. Robe. Oh, I was like, you can bring rope. rope. You can yeah. bring rope too. Yeah. You can tie your hands behind whatever, your back. Whatever I mean. you're into. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. You can bring rope. Yeah, listen, it's a belt. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm wearing today. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. All right. All right. Nice. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. hmm? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. I, I thought you were going to say something. You want to wrap up with the question or... Yeah. Yeah. So as part of our, well, yeah, as part of our ending and how we typically end our podcast, right. We try and have an actionable item for the audience. So what is one thing that you can recommend for the audience? Um, something that doesn't cost a lot of time or a lot of money and doesn't take a lot of time, but can be making a positive impact in their life. So I already had this question given to me, so I had time Good. to think about it. But I knew the answer as soon as he asked. She me did anyway. as soon as I asked it. She didn't I split blink. it off. Yeah, okay. I knew. Um, authenticity. That is the number one thing you can do to set yourself apart. Um, it's the number one thing that's going to bring people to your business. It's going to get you sales. It's going to help you make the next step in your life. It's going to help you leave your relationship. It it literally is going to pave the way to the life that you want is just by being authentic. Um, and something actually happened with us at the beginning of my business. I I was on social media and for the first time I was going to drop the F bomb. (laughs) And, um, my husband actually said to me, it was planned. Yeah. Well, I was, I was writing a post Okay, and I read it to him and he said, you're going to say fuck on social media. And that's when it kind of dawned on me. Yeah. I'm going to say that because that's me. That that's me authentically. That's who I am. And if I hide that from the world, if I, if I don't let that out and people come to me and don't realize that that's a part of me and then they start working with me and I'm playing gangster rap in my studio (laughs) and I'm dropping the F bomb everywhere. They're going to leave thinking, Oh my God, I am totally offended. I do not like her at all. And their experience is going to be horrible. Um, just being true to yourself and who you are is literally one of the biggest thing. It's cultivated my team. It's cultivated my close tight knit friends. I've had more, more real friends. I feel like than I have ever had. Um, and the only reason is just because I'm myself. If I, if I try to put on a show or, or hide, I feel, I feel, I don't even feel like it's people putting on a show, but it's just them hiding away their real feelings or their real thoughts because they're afraid that they're going to offend somebody or that somebody's going to have a different opinion than what they do. Um, that's when your circle of friends becomes kind of skewed and you're doing things and committing to things that. Um, maybe you don't really believe in because you're not being real with yourself. And I think that lends itself perfectly what you said you're about, the, being authentic. And then what you're trying to do is help females and, uh, and to become empowered and be authentic. Yeah. And, and just not love try to yourself. hide themselves and be yeah. willing to say, this is who I am. Yeah. I love it. If you love it, great. If not, if not, that, then whatever. Then, sorry. I mean, so. if not, when you, when you're, when you love yourself and you, and your imperfections and accept who you are as a person, other people start loving those things about you. And the ones that don't, don't matter. Exactly. That's the biggest thing. The, the ones that don't, they, they just simply don't matter and they will fade away and you will lose friends. You will lose connections. But in the interim of that, you're also going to create new relationships that are going to be stronger and richer in your mm-hmm. life. Is just and you're not going to lose the real friends. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. the ones you have yeah. are deeper yeah. and the ones that mm-hmm. weren't are gone and you get right. new ones. Yeah. 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 Well, Nikki, we really appreciate you joining us. Well, before uh, we go. If you, yeah, where, where oh, can they ahead, find you? Yeah. Yeah, where, where can they oh, find you? www.nmboudoir.com. 
How do you Boudoir spell Boudoir? Is B-O-U-D-O-I-R. Okay. So N as in Nicole, M Marie, B-O-U-D-O-I-R.com. You can also catch me on Instagram, which is also NM Boudoir, Nicole Marie Boudoir. Perfect. Not to be confused with Nicole Marie Boudoir in Maryland. There's two of us with exactly the same name. No, her work is actually just like mine. (laughs) It's funny. My clients follow her. Her clients follow me. We're messaging each other like, wait, is this your client or mine? Because they little, our work is very similar. Maybe you guys could plan where you do it. And then you make a package where they fly up and do one in Maryland. (laughs) There you go. We want to shoot together. We have, we have, you just happen to live in paradise and she lives in Maryland. I know. Right. No offense against that other than Nicole Marie. No, maybe. Maybe no. she'll come on the show one time. Yeah. Maybe, hey, Nicole yeah. Marie. Yes. Get on. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks for joining us. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, you can find us at fullgrillalife at gmail.com or if you want to be a guest on the show. And if you want to follow us on Instagram and see what's going on, we are at, at fullgrillalife and Twitter is gorilla full. Like, like beautiful, beautiful, but with a gorilla. And please hit the subscribe button of uh, on your app of choice. There we go. That's a fucking wrap. We're out. See you. Peace.